All right, here we go. Um, okay, so my name is Adam Jolov. I come from Panchabuta Conservation Foundation, which is a tiny NGO um, in Kagal, Karnataka, near the Aganashi River Estuary. So we do citizen science in a very pilot, exploratory, everything way. But most of what I'm talking about relates more to some of the things that Suhail discussed. And, and really, I'm just going to tell you how we use IVP and the ways that we want to take it forward with ourselves. And then I'm going to ask everybody here for help. So we first we use citizen science as a way we consider it advocacy, right? So we're generating environmental citizenship awareness within our local communities and science. And we do that, IVP tends to be our backbone. We have a group built into IVP. We have 326 observations of 58 species, 14 users right now. Um, and that's really just most of our staff and a few students um, and two schools that we work in. And we do e we use eBird, we do the backyard bird count, iPhone butterfly. We're exploring season watch now. We just completed the AWC back in July or in January. And then we also do citizen science as education. So we work in a couple of the local schools, we take kids on biodiversity walks, teach them basically how to use a camera, right? Green dot means it's in focus, half press, full press. We use a GPS unit to actually document things and, and that's going okay. We're exploring ways to continue to work with kids. It's pretty difficult to get for, um, fourth and fifth standard students to pay attention and we're trying now to look at some other options. Uh, we also do social, we do social ecology research generally, so I have a project on medicinal plants, I have a project on mangroves, and we're trying to see how we can integrate those as well into IVP. We have other ideas. Um, we're all, we all, I use ODK, Open Data Kit, for anybody who knows what that is. But we're exploring open forests. We're looking at archiving historical photos. Um, and then we, and there's some other stuff up there, and we need help. Um, so we need help. If there's anybody who has ideas on how to tap into urban schools, we can take school students from Bangalore down, do the same with them in our area, partnering with local schools. There's my two minutes. Um, what I couldn't do with a bunch of, I could do anything with a bunch of donated smartphones, so we're looking and trying to reach out in those networks, and then um, we can also use some advice on how to make our citizen science more useful to activists and other, other kinds of scientists, right? So can we professionalize our own ecological research? I think that was two minutes and some seconds. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. V. Ramanam? No? Okay, we have more time. Uh, Joyce and Parara? Bangalore are dependent on wetlands and water bodies, 
And uh, at the rate of which Bangalore has been expanding uh, recently, we've lost almost all the water bodies and wetlands that existed around the, the city. Um, Dr. Enrique also said that birds could be a very good indicator of the health of an ecosystem because of the high metabolic rate and uh, when they do visit our wetlands and they need to feed from these wetlands, these lakes, the pollution in these lakes affects them much more than it does to other species because you cannot uh, really take plants you can't really take plants uh, such as hyacinth and do a study because they are known to do uh, for bioaccumulation. They can accumulate the nutrients and they can still survive. So what we wanted to see was occupancy versus abundance. The common species and even the migrants, how they occupy habitat and their numbers. Uh, frequency of the occurrence of common. So common birds as indicators of the health of a habitat instead of migrants because migrants are not a very static population. They keep moving and the health, and health of lakes and tanks in the city. So these are our methods, we use travelling counts, burn counts, uh, stationary counts, uh, we noted down coverage, other habitat parameters and our sampling site was 150 lakes in all sectors of Bangalore. So these are the parameters we looked into, you have uh, islands, moist bed, colour, power lines, jogging tracks, emerging plant collection, all the parameters that can affect a wetland and uh, in turn affect the bird diversity. So what have we found from this survey was that the habitat degradation is extremely bad in most, especially in the urban lakes and the occupancy has taken a serious hit in these lakes. The diversity hasn't taken such a serious hit, uh, we, we aren't too sure right now because we haven't crunched the data but visually what we see is the diversity in some lakes still survives but the occupancy has taken a hit and there is an estimated 90% decline in the population and the pressure on birds is increasing these days with the sewage uh, inflow, shoreline loss, encroachment etc. Kiran Mahathir. Uh, you can uh, try and uh, 
photographs cicada, also record cicadas and contribute so that we understand more about Indian cicadas. Thanks, you can contact me, our question is. Thank you. Myself, show my face. Uh, I've been quietly watching uh, MHU for uh, several years. I work at Hobi Baba Center in Mumbai. Anybody from Mumbai? Puna, Maharashtra. Okay. So, uh, what, uh, what we are doing is we are into science education, uh, particularly biology education. So, we have a very interesting uh, group, uh, quite untypical of uh, government organizations to have a very informal group. And that's why, so our group is called CUBE, C U B. The CUBE is expanded as uh, collaboratively understanding biology and education. So, in this group, uh, we do a lot of work, which includes uh, citizen science uh, field work and also a lot of laboratory work. And also, uh, and we also use a lot of technology for our work, including mailing lists, uh, open data kit. Our OTP, uh, Open Tree Map, o Open Tree Map, and uh, and our also we also make our own software to you know particularly use mapping as a context for learning and understanding biodiversity, and also to introduce. So while you you guys are doing fantastic work, we really want to uh, understand the need to ensure that the students and that particularly uh, high school students and uh, college students also begin to understand and get sensitized to many of these things. So, for example, uh, one small thing that we did last year is that uh, you know, a lot of rain trees in Mumbai uh, are dying. Nobody knows why. And even now we don't know exactly. We have a lot of stories to tell, but we don't know why they are dying. So we started uh, you know, tree mapping as a, as, a, as a result of that. And in the process, we realized immediately that you know, whoever participated, you know, there are the sensitization enormously increased. They not only now started looking at only rate, but also started looking at other trees. So most of us, particularly in urban areas as well as in other places, we don't notice what we see every day. So this is one of the important uh, interventions that we are actually doing. And we're also into culture. Uh, as a, as a part of education. And the three parts of the culture that we are looking at is reporting, recording, and research. And, and how, how that requires enormous amount of, you know, like how, how all of you are actually taking records and observing and posting those observations. And this is one culture that we thought that every school student must do. And they should have marks for it as well. And of course, marks is not the only reason why they should do it, but then uh, why can't such uh, contributions actually give people some grade and credit. So we are trying to hack the existing education system, trying to see how one can make such changes. So very soon we will be collaborating in a big way with uh, uh, NCRT, CBSC schools and various other government schools. So we work a lot with government schools, municipal schools and you know, tribal schools and all that. So that's what we do, we work with children and then we are trying to bring out the thing. And one last thing I wanted to say is that for the last few years when we are on the field, one major challenge that we faced is the portals that we all build. Because, you know, the portals are centralized at one place and children in the villages and even the college students in schools, even colleges even in Mumbai, do not have very good access to work uh, happily with that sites for the reason of all of you know that the bandwidth access is limited. So that is one of the reasons why we started with a new idea recently, which is that we actually carry the servers in our laptops. So that we're carrying distributed servers and then working in those fields. So put it up 
to install a server in school, install a server in college. And I'm also looking forward to such ideas from your own software team. So how can I actually carry uh, IBP portal in a, in a small school box or a college server? I'm really happy to think uh, with you on the problem. I'll be happy to help. And I, I'm of course uh, inviting all of you to please tell us if you have a small <coughs> nano post to write about, you know, how to absorb a flag, or a spider, or you know, get close, or whatever you know you've been doing, excellent work. Please write small, small modules so that you know they all actually tomorrow should get into our, uh, our curriculum in some way. So I invite all of you to help us, uh, you know, sensitize our children. We need to come on. <coughs> Hello, good evening to all. Myself, Vinay, and uh, I come from Mangalore University, from Mangalore. And uh, this presentation for two minutes will be about uh, my work and my French, few of my French work we have done in our own locality. It's not like we have done something in the Western Ghats area. So my fauna of interests are amphibians, birds, reptiles and in insects. So what types of documentations I've used is uh, mainly I do photography, nature photography and wildlife stuff. So also I record the behavior of animals or these uh, fauna in the field by using acoustic te uh, techniques, mainly frogs are vocal and uh, some of the ecological characters. So my present work, I'm doing my research currently, before that I was uh, doing my MSc in Mangalore University. At that time I recorded some of the fauna present in my campus. So my present work is on to see how these uh, frogs and birds have adapted to life in cities because very less people walk in cities and what's happening to them, we really don't know. So this work was uh, along with a few of my friends and we were able to record around 81 species of birds. So it included some of the rare birds like uh, savannah night jars and uh, recently we have the first record for Mangalore as well, uh, Ceylon frog mouth and uh, also we do such uh, awareness camps like you know for students or for uh, other individuals who are working people because we need to involve other people as well not only biologists or uh, you know scientists so if we involve citizens only we can uh, really do something about conservation so uh, so this uh, numbers are increasing so we want to come up with a book for uh, birds of manual university as well very soon so uh, we have already documented 81 now it is almost 90 and recently we did the campus bird count where we recorded around 77 species of uh, birds. So these are some of the some of my friends who are doing bird watching you can see that. I just take my friends as well so that they'll also learn something. So these are some of the first records for Mangalore from the campus. You can see that 120 acres of land has real diversity. So we found recently Ceylon frog which was not so far recorded from this region. And also, which are one of the elevation species like uh, variable bush frog, Raoult sisters acropar, like the first time record from uh, Mangalore from Mangalore University. Anyways, thanks for listening to me and thanks for the opportunity. around Calcutta and in and around Brisbane. And 
we have few things. Uh, the major project of our is it was a tree restoration project in West Bengal. There was a So, followed by a major wetland uh, restoration in Calcutta, and after that, 20,000 migratory birds returned there. And it was a major project because that whole lake was completely clogged with weeds. And our main uh, aim is to set up butterfly gardens. And we have set up around main five butterfly gardens in and around Calcutta. And we have one main place. You can see the picture here. That's in the Eco Park. And people can come over there. We actively involve school students to come there. So it's like a, a semi-artificial area. We set up the gardens outside. We collect the eggs and collect the larvae from there. And inside the lab, we raid them up and then release the adult butterflies outside. This is our major things. And we also set up butterfly gardens in schools and colleges so that we can involve school students. We also have published lots of books in regional languages and we have quite a good grip with other people. My main aim to come here is to collaborate with other people right now here and I am inviting people from other parts of India so that they can come to West Bengal and join with us and we can assure them with uh, all the help I, we can provide and that's it and I'm going to